Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's been a minute, but Have You Heard is finally back. Today, we're dropping our first podcast of the semester and are extremely excited about our guest, new Nichols College president, Glenn Solmacy. Since arriving in July, Glenn has certainly made his mark on the Hill and here in athletics. I sat down with Glenn last week to discuss a slew of topics, including his love of college athletics, capital projects and upgrades, what he loves about being a bison, his time as an author, and his vision for the college going forward. Happy holidays from everyone here at Nichols. And now, without further ado, Glenn Solmacy. So we're here with Nichols College President Glenn Solmacy. Glenn, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's great to be here, Pete. Thanks for having me. So you're just kind of wrapping up your first six months at Nichols. Just talk about what's going on this last semester and just where we are right now. First, it's hard to believe that it's six months. It feels like I just got here. But uh, one of the things I've told people, Pete, is that um, I feel like I've been here for four years already. And people, and not in the bad way, in the mm-hmm. good way, meaning that I was so welcomed by the community, by the students, uh, by the faculty uh, in a way that I th- really would never have imagined. And uh, that makes it really, really exceptional. So we're really excited. We remember coming up here, Marla and I, when I heard about this opportunity and the recruiters called and we came up and drove up the hill and almost like all of you, probably everyone listening to this, whether you're alumni, supporter, booster, student, or parent, you see this little magic college, the magical place on a hill. And it kind of came to us and uh, when I put two and two together and remember that, uh, you know, way back we heard Congressman Kennedy uh, tease about talking to my mom that uh, that very, very much in my past is that uh, when I was here as a seven-year-old going to Joe Namath football camp and it hit back in my head, that was the last time I had been here. So sports have always mm-hmm. been part of my experience at Nichols. It continues to be and will always be while I'm the president. One of my regrets is that I, I work for the Jets on the side. Yeah. I actually met Joe Namath a couple of years ago, and that was my icebreaker to get in was Nichols College, and I completely blanked on it. I kind of <laughs> fanboyed for a few seconds, and I totally forgot yeah, to mention it. That is the greatest. Yeah. He, you can see right behind it is the football. Uh, good luck, Joe Namath, uh, football signed by Joe. And then that little orange pad that's just next to it is my autograph pad that my mother, who's 90, after I was appointed here, went and looked in my uh, – drawer next to my bed, the little nightstand next to my bed that's been in my house since I was a little feller, and found that in there. And it's John Doherty, Ed Marinara, all the folks that were here then. Weeb Eubank has signed it, and mm. Bob Bello, and you know the, the coach at Harvard at the time, and others that uh, were actually sending along good wishes. So it's uh, it's a small world and a and a great great one to be part of that whole. Uh, whole Have group. you saved that football since? No, camp, that, or is that no, that is one that uh, Charlie gave me. Okay, uh, she had gotten it, and and because she knows about the story with my family and and uh, and. Uh, my mother, and I think it was probably after, I think she gave that to me after Congressman Kennedy broke the news at uh, the uh, convocation where he informed everybody that he, Mrs. Salmacy, my mother, told him the true story is that Glenn called home from football camp every night crying, <laughs> asking to go home as a seven-year-old. So that was very uh, kind of the, my good friend, Joseph Kennedy, to do that to me. So it was good. Very awesome. Well, you mentioned driving up the hill and kind of seeing the magic here. So talk about your first impressions of Nichols and maybe how they've changed now that you've been here for a couple months. Uh, I think there's no question that uh, it's only gotten better. My love of the institution, I would say Marlon and I fell in love with it pretty quickly. And I think one of the items is is that it really is a family. So my first impression is you hear that all the time, and everyone listening hears that at companies and corporations or other colleges. This is truly a family. I mean, I, I want it to be that way. I wanted this. I, it's part of going to work every day. People feel like they're connected to something greater than themselves. And I think that's something that is... Uh, not lost upon me any day I come to work and, and every day that I'm excited to come to work. So I think my first impression is that the people are better than I expected. It is more of a family atmosphere. And I think I've said several times that we're at an inflection point. It's time the college is at an inflection point at a very difficult time in higher education. And this is the perfect time for me to recognize we're more than just that. We're ready to shine in this difficult times. We're ready to explode. And so I would say, sum it up, is that I see um, over the first six months, what I've gotten to observe is that it's a rocket ship about to take off. And it's a matter of putting the right fuel into the engine to take off. And uh, I'm I'm delighted to be the fellow that's leading the charge on this, that we're going to put rocket fuel into that 
into that rocket ship and it's going to take off and during my time here we're going to have a great time so i'm looking forward to it just to expand a little bit talk a little bit about how exciting it is for you taking over a college that during this time of transition and, and pandemic and things like that certain schools have closed a lot of them are suffering with enrollment and finances that Nichols really came through that pretty well and it is again ready to take off no, no no question poised for greatness is the way i describe it it's ready to take off because of the hard work and support of alumni the philanthropic support of our athletic programs the philanthropic support of our academic programs and our student life programs as well as the tremendous dedication by our staff and faculty that did weather a storm, an unprecedented storm that none of us knew what to do, none of us knew what to expect. No one could tell you they knew how to operate in this new environment. And so you did it. And I got the benefit of coming here and being the beneficiary of, of your hard work. And I get to see it as being not only able to survive these incredibly difficult times in higher ed with increasing tuition, lower amount of students available, demographic shifts, beyond what we could imagine, attacks on higher education by politicians. It's really a difficult time. But Nichols does it the right way. They focused on the right things. They were able to get people back to work. They focused on the students. It's a student-centered campus. It's focused on student success. And so doing that, and a dedication, a love of the college, ensure that not only are you set to survive the threat, but I would argue we're ready to thrive. I tell parents when they come to visit Pete, and they'll say, you gotta look underneath the hood. And one of the great things here is you look under the hood here and you see financial stability, both from an operational perspective, but the bigger item I would suggest is we run the school like a business. That's, That's what, what I, I tell friends and family. They ask me about Nichols and I say, we run the school. We're a business school that runs it like a business. No question. And it's a great thing to have in this day and age during this difficult time. If you're not running it like a business, you're in trouble. And, uh, you know, I do think that is a, a great opportunity for us to capitalize on running it like a business and ensuring that... Uh, at the end of the day, our students might love law or love finance or love psychology or love uh, accounting. And I want them to do that. I love that. As a former academic and a provost and a law professor, I want them to do that. But the difference at Nichols is we get them job ready. So at the end of that four-year conclusion, after 50 presentations and getting these great experiential learning opportunities and internships, playing interclassics, 23 NCAA programs, athletic programs, having that leadership uh, laboratory almost is what I would call Nichols is a leadership laboratory. Learn what to do, not to do, watch, observe, figure out what fits their you know, personality style. Is at the end of the day, they're going to get a job and they're going to do really well. They're going to start off because businesses today, Pete, aren't giving you a two-year training program or a one-year internship. They want you to start on day one. And, and Nichols graduates, as they have been in the past, as the great folks we have in our alumni can attest to, they start on day one. And it's better than ever. We're going to keep that going. I do. You hit on so many great points of what makes Nichols such a great institution. And you can see your passion and you can hear it in your voice as it comes through. Something I always enjoy asking our coaches that we can spin it on you and see how it goes. You can call me coach. That's an honor. <laughs> you want to give me a title then? I'll take that. Also, that's the next podcast. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> With the coaches, I love to ask them, especially we have assistant coaches that this is their first head coaching gig. Is there something you always wanted to do as an assistant coach that now as a head coach you get to try out? So for years, maybe as an understudy, we'll yep. say, have you had ideas? When I, when I run a college, I'd like to do this or I can't wait to try this or certain things with Nichols. Is there anything you want to expand upon with that? Well, I, I think you know, some of what we're doing now, I think one of the items is to, is to uh, make it a family, as I said, and we already have that, but it's to expand on that. Marl and I will both live here. I want them to know my wife. I want them to know my children. I think that's an important part. I think Callum was just in here climbing on the walls <laughs> before we did this podcast in my office. But I, I think um, uh, what I really want to be able to do while we're here is have a couple of items. One is experiential learning. I want every Nichols graduate to have experiential learning, not interning for you, Pete, or interning for me or for a professor, but going out to industry, working for PwC for a semester, working for other uh, entities, working for companies, working for industry or companies as an intern to really learn what it's like, how to fail, what to do, interact with groups, collaborate, and have that experience. And the second item that I'm excited about is I, I'm a firm believer that the fourth industrial revolution is here. It's not coming. We're living in it. We don't even realize it. We're going to have everything is being disrupted. Every accounting programs, psychology, the medical profession, um, finance, obviously, anything is being disrupted by tech. 
and the tech world is at us, and I call it data science. So I want every Nichols graduate to also have some exposure to data science, whether it be coding, artificial intelligence, analytics, or um, or robotics, and that's sort of under my view of data science. So those are a couple things. The other item, I, there's nothing greater uh, since we're on this broadcast, is is to be a president that gets to go down and watch football. It, it's his team. Essentially, uh, you know, it's it's uh, his or her team. In this case, watching the women's lacrosse, watching women's hockey, watching all of the sports, uh, field hockey. Um, when I go down there, there is no greater feeling. So you ask, what, what did I want to do? I wanted to go out there like I did. I did the coin toss against Westfield State with my son. It's probably no greater feeling for a president. And that's maybe not what you're looking for, but I got to well, tell you, uh, there, one of the great aspects of being a president is interacting with the director of athletics and the coaches. And, and as a former academic, I could tell you, as I was just tell, talking to you before, my previous institution, I was closer to the coaches than I was to the faculty. It's just a small, just the reality. And I think part of the whole ath academic experience and college experience, as you and I would both say, is being involved in athletics for a long time is uh, an essential part of the formation of an American citizen is the NCAA. And we're blessed to be a part of it and have 23 programs. And I'm proud of every one of our student athletes for their dedication to their sport and to academics. Yeah. And a great transition to athletics there. We'll jump into just your background a little bit. You know, growing up as a kid, you played several sports. You went on to play in college. Let's tell, talk a little bit about that. Sure. I, I was in high school. I played football, basketball, and lacrosse. I started playing football at seven. Uh, my illustrious career uh, at, at uh, Nichols was as a seven-year-old at Joe <laughs> The only time I was allowed on your football field was then. So now I just walk on and flip a coin. But um, basketball, I was uh, loved. I loved basketball. I actually uh, was all county in Long Island. In basketball, which people look at me now and you know scratch their head. It's, it's short guys. Age, 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 age takes its uh, its damage uh, as well. But um, and then lacrosse, and I played all three, and then went uh, to Coast Guard Academy and played football there. But athletics is part of it. My family we were all athletes, um, uh, and uh, you know I think it's very very important that students have that opportunity now more than ever for junior high school. You have a son, Pete, and other. Folks, you know, uh, uh, high school, junior high, is just to get them off of their tuchuses and not play games and play Xbox and all the stuff everyone's listening to, Pete knows, right? We both know. And the, the uh, Madden, I love it more than anybody too, but it's sure. addictive. And I'd rather have them out playing ball as much as possible, whatever it is. And, and obviously I love golf too. And as you, all of you know, we have a great Nichols Golf Course here. I encourage you all to play this summer and spring when we come back open up. Uh, but I think um, it, it's had a huge part of a formation of my experience. And I do think that there is no greater leadership experience for a junior high or a high school student than going on to college. But the junior high and, and senior high provides that opportunity to lead and learn leadership skills that will pay dividends the rest of your life. You mentioned getting off the Xbox and getting off their phones. I try to have a rule within myself, but I wish I could say I kept to 100% of the time. But if my son walks in and says, Dad, you want to go play catch? I'll drop anything that I'm doing and go do that. Well, that's great. It's great if you do that. I, you know, Normally, I, I don't do that. I say, leave me alone. <laughs> but uh, the you good can't say I'm batting a thousand. That. But... Exactly. No, it's great. And it's true. You have to set the example. And that's, again, those captains that are on our teams, they know they set the example for the, the students. What I, what I put out when I've spoken to the – I had the fortune, our athletic director, Eric Gobiel, had me uh, the opportunity to meet a lot of our teams at the beginning of the year and talk to them. And I said to them, you're role models. You don't realize it. Everyone looks up to you. And the, the folks that are on the, the podcast will know all of athletes are role models for the whole campus. And if you get in trouble, it's doubly worse. So you have to recognize not only a role model for, your, for others, but you're for yourself because people... Uh, are going to look at you differently. They expect more from you as a student athlete, and I do. And I, you know, uh, I think that you get to see them learn learn about that. And and to Eric's credit, and to yours, Pete, and the whole athletic department's credit, no one's more respectful to me on campus than your student athletes. You, you might have seen my whole office is decorated, um, beautifully decorated. My doors, and they even did my, uh, they did different parts of my office, <laughs> and other spots. Uh, the women's lacrosse team came up and did all of this they came up and decorated everything and they were they were loving it they were in my office they were, they were here for about an hour they were taking pictures in the boardroom and taking pictures but uh I, I love to have that sort of relationship with them and see them they were out doing this because they were raising some money for their 
sure. for their uh, club, for their team in this case, but it was also uh, a chance to hang out with me, and it was fun. It was really great. Yeah, something that coach talk here, but you know the student athletes on campus, whether it's the quarterback on the football team or the point guard on the basketball team, people know who you are, so they know when you're in class and they know when you're not in class. So to your point of being a role model, no question. Not all the student athletes realize that, but they are role models for sure. And, and role models for the kids, because I think as we see Division Three um, taking on more and more importance in, in communities, a community like Dudley and Webster, we're it. We're the game in town. Yeah. We are. We are it. And and when these kids go out into town. They know they're a Nichols football player. If there's a big kid, it's a likelihood that uh, he's a football player, and or, or or someone has a Nichols lacrosse jacket on. They're gonna know you're a lacrosse player. So sure. like, they're the only game in town. But these kids do look up to them, the high school kids as well. For sure, you came from an institution that was fairly successful in athletics, which is Bryant University. If you don't mind me mentioning that, um, they have a number of successful programs there. Can you talk about what it means to a campus like that, and also a campus like Nichols, to have successful athletic teams? What it does for the campus on so many different levels? Incredible, a great question, Pete. It's enormously important for the college experience, but the non the folks who who didn't, who maybe played in high school but aren't playing anymore, it brings the whole community together. And and Nichols does a great job. I absolutely love going to volley. I never. Never saw as much enthusiasm at a volleyball game than I did the women's volleyball this fall. I'm people chanting. I, I saw Suffolk University, I'll do respect to my friends at Suffolk, um, just shell shocked by hearing people chanting, Let's go, Bison, let's go from the rafters and around. It was mostly filled, and it was a women's volleyball match, and we, we beat them because I saw them. They were shocked. The yeah. coach was shocked. Um, so I think it adds a lot of fun to the community, it adds to campus life, it adds to pride. And pride, bison pride stems from athletics. It does a- academics as well. It does about what I talked about, our return on investment. But a component of what makes this place special is our incredible athletic programs. My previous place similar. You know, one of the items that I, uh, you know, put out, you know, after the, um, uh, we played my previous institution in basketball. And I was so proud of the students there, our students going there. We flooded the place. And um, it was funny because I did get a, a call from a, folks in, from uh, 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 Division Two divisions that reached out to me, and, and are, there's interest in us. And I have to weigh that out with, with kicking around with Eric and talk to the board, and I've talked to the cabinet a bit. You know, maybe one of the items, we've got beautiful facilities, we've got room to grow, we've got a great campus, we've got great athletes. Maybe all of you think about it and get back to me if you have feelings. Do we go Division Two? do we go Division One? Why not? And one of the great things about it is you get more and more exposure. So athletics does a lot to campus for culture, does a lot for um, enthusiasm and branding and love of the campus, but it also does a lot for diversity, brings folks in from different parts of the country, does a lot for our, our racial diversity, gender diversity, all of that. But it brings in different perspectives, which is what college is all about. It's supposed to be about having, it's no fun if you have everybody from Massachusetts and, and Connecticut. We have people from Florida, Texas, California. I don't think we have anybody from Idaho, but if we did, no. <laughs> uh, we might. Maybe we should start recruiting there. I think they're growing in, in, in numbers. But I think um, and these type of things that help to the whole fabric of the community. So athletics at a place like Nichols College is critical to our success going forward. But just as importantly, it creates a culture here that celebrates athletics, which I think is an important part of the college experience. I'm very, very proud of our student athletes. Yeah. We can run through a whole other podcast on this topic, but yeah. I'll ask you one more question about it, just because you mentioned yeah. you know possibly moving divisions. You were at an institution that went through a transition from division two to division yep. one. Do you see any similarities, or at least having some experience with that? No um, question. Has that helped here? No, no question. Every, every, there's tremendous similarities between the two in every aspect. <laughs> um, I would say that the only difference is that I could never say that I was would ever hope to be, and I guess I would pray and hope to be as good as Ron Makeley was for for Brian. He was an incredible leader um, for 24 years. So if, if I'm here four years, I'll be happy. You guys don't get rid of me. But I, I think uh, 24 years is a long run. But I uh, th- that transition, the college is the same. It's a business focus is the same. The great a, a number of sports, the uh, coaches. There's a lot of opportunity here for similar growth um and i think you know having a great ad helps too and a great you know athletic staff it's really a matter of 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 us saying what do we want to be and and my belief in everything i've been doing if you've watched any of you that are watching or listening is to think big 
don't settle for mediocrity. And not saying that Division Three is mediocre. It's not. I can tell you, I learned that at Coast Guard Academy. When I thought I was a Division One ball player, and I realized I was a very okay <laughs> Division Three ball player at best. And uh, but I think that we have to embrace greatness and think big. These are visionary times that require those sorts of big things. And I'd ask everyone to consider it with me and join me. You know, we're talking about big issues with buildings. We're talking about townhomes going on the campus. We're, we, I just was meeting about it. We're, we're going to build townhomes on the campus for the seniors. There'll be townhomes. We're, we've got a, a golf course now. And we've got the bar. We're taking that back. We have a, a bar on campus. We're expanding uh, and, and pursuing every opportunity where there's land in the area uh, for other uh, ideas and thoughts that we're, we're, we're considering. And I think it's important for us. And maybe, you know, we we uh, we go Division Two, and we only we stay there for 10 years and we go Division One, or we jump to Division One, or a couple of sports go Division One. And I don't know how it'll all play out, but we got to think big and, and brag about it. Uh, one of the things I think you asked me earlier about the culture here, Pete, sure. all of you, and I'm still new, it's only been six months, all of you are modest. And there's an institutional modesty. No one, you're very, very modest for how great we are. And that's probably why it's the best kept secret in New England. I'm trying to shatter that, right? And get rid of that whole idea. But it's because you're modest. All of you are really great. I and mean, there's so many great aspects. An example, our alumni are great. Bob Stansky is an alumni. He was the CEO of the Magellan Fund. Class of, he's class of 83, I think, here. Um, he's number three at Fidelity still. We don't even, we, I don't think he's even on our webpage. There's no picture. Um, uh, Keith Anderson, BlackRock Investments, right? The, he's one of the founding partners of, of BlackRock. I met him in New York City. He's the most nice. You would never think the guy has a house in Paris. Yeah. And a house. So uh, wonderful. We don't have him even on our Wikipedia page. No one's even talks. So you know, similarly, we have to find ways to, for me, and I, I say this is on me, to brag about all of you, whether it's in athletics, whether it's the coaches who are phenomenal, whether it's the staff, whether it's faculty, or it's alumni. We have to we have to find ways to get the message out. And I ask all of you, and I mean this most sincerely, to get the word out. Wear your Nichols gear everywhere you go. Wear it when you're in the airport. Wear that Nichols hat and proudly display because if we all commit to that and we wear a Nichols sweatshirt, Nichols hat, people see it, they ask about it, you tell them, you know, the goal really for me is that within five years, people say, oh, Nichols is that business college in Massachusetts. If we, and, they're, and you're in the LAX when they tell you that we've, we've achieved what we wanted at that point because we have to be realistic about where we could head. But if we can get that, kind of like Pepperdine, everybody knows it's in Malibu, it's in California somewhere. The prettiest yeah. campus in America is what people say. And hello. And guess who it is on the East Coast? The prettiest campus in America is, is Nichols College. And we are going to be the best residential campus in America in the next four years. I had a conversation with a student athlete a few weeks ago, and he said something that really caught me off guard. And I mean that in a good way, in that he had transferred in from a Division One institution. He was an athlete, and he was playing here. And he said, you know what I love about this? He says, we get a lot of people that come to our games. And you and I are both from the New York area, so yeah. we know it's a pro sports dominated area. No but even people want to, you know, look at Division Three, Nichols College, you know, Massachusetts Central Mass, Packed. and everyone's coming down to watch these games. And if we get the community a little bit more involved, it's only going to make those student athletes have a better experience. No, no question. We the more students uh, we get at these games, the better. I mean, it's really wonderful to see the folks come out. And I will tell you, the basketball is fun. I'm presuming it was a basketball player you spoke to, or it was, yeah, because it it's who I think it is. I mean, he, he's. I just saw him now, and uh, comes up and you know calls me big dog. <laughs> I said that's not. Uh, he, he's very very funny, um, but there is a tremendous amount. A lot of times at Division One, I, I would tell you we have more people probably here than I had at my previous institution a lot of games. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that sort of enthusiasm and watching them the other night was just extraordinary. Uh, as, as you know, Pete, we were down by 19 with eight minutes to go. And I think I saw you at the first half looking at the stats. We were 0 for, I think, it three point like, land 0, 0 for 15 by the time we finally started hitting. Yeah, and, wasn't good. And uh, talk about resilience and what we think about the Nichols way and about the Nichols mantra. And what I see is what Nichols is all about. Grit, perseverance, determination. Bounce back from 19 points. I was kind of almost at the point saying, oh my goodness gracious, we're falling apart. And they came back 
like gangbusters, and I'll never forget that one. That was that was an exciting moment. Yeah. Exciting. I'm excited for you to experience the gym during a conference game, I can't especially wait. conference playoff game, because it just gets packed. We we had a Sweet 16 game at Amherst a couple I years ago, that. and people will say, "Oh, Amherst was on break." We had three fourths of that gym packed, and <laughs> some of the best pictures that I have of our students reacting to Marco Cecharia's fourth or fifth three pointer of the game, and just watching the students, you know, the Go euphoria crazy. amongst them, it was great. So you're gonna have a lot of fun this this winter, I, I imagine. I don't know if you all, anyone that was at the game, Pete, I don't know if you saw. I went up and around when things we started to come back. I went up on the rafters there on the track above and gave all the students high fives to get them going <laughs> and i would argue sometimes i think they look at me like who is this guy right. who's this guy in a bow tie yeah. walking around but they seem to enjoy yeah. that sort of enthusiasm which yeah. is fun one of the questions i was going to ask you is that you're obviously you're a big supporter of athletics how important is it for you to be seen at these games to not just see the student athletes on campus or maybe when you're walking through the hallways of, of you know buildings but just other games that they see there say, wow, this is a president who does support us because that doesn't happen everywhere. No, no question. It's incredibly important, important part of my leadership and important part of my time here is to, to do that. I was just telling Marla, uh, she was one of the games she didn't make it to the other night where she missed this great 19 point mm. comeback. But um, when I was talking to the, um, when I was talking to her, I was reflecting on the, the thought that um, th there's an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of kids who don't have that uh, opportunity that is provided to us here, you know, every day, every day. But I do think that um, there is no no doubt in my mind that e everybody there at that game was committed to winning, was committed to um, uh, the excitement of it all. And 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 I guess what I was saying, I started to say, saying tomorrow, was I turned around. Every one of my cabinet was there. It wasn't just the president. No, I saw Bill Lafayette. Every, 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 every single the the provost, the vice president for enrollment management, the CFO, mm -hmm. the vice president for ops, the vice president for student affairs, vice president for um, innovation and external. Every every single one was there, and I told that made me feel terrific. Amongst all their parents and friends, uh, and, and and students all over, but they see it, and it's important. It's a leadership tool there. These young men and women are sacrificing in the classroom and on the court. It's pride. And, and, and uh, there's nothing more, like I said, I, I will be as transparent as possible. So there's no better feeling than walking on you when know, you're the president of a winning team. <laughs> That's a great That's feeling. That's a great sure. feeling. We talked about Monday's game, obviously. Have you had any other uh, memorable moments so far? Oh. You mentioned the coin toss of football. What else jumps out at you? I, 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 have, I have tons. Uh, the field hockey teams win uh, the 250th win for uh, LA. That was a big, big one for me to, to know that she had done that and she was excited. Uh, j jumping behind the um, uh, bison, behind Thunder, when mm. the field hockey team was getting a picture. I think you were there. I, think I took that picture. Like, like a silly, uh, <laughs> silly fella. Um, I would say the um, Westfield State game, I said that was, that was a great win in football. The other one in football for me... Um, uh, was the Ana Maria game. And that was a way, mm -hmm. but that was another example where our second win, Ana Maria wound up winning the conference, right, at the end of the day. And, yeah. and uh, we came back in the second half and beat them. And that was, again, a, that was a great, great win already. So in six months, we're talking about great experiences. The game against um, Bryant basketball was great for me to see. Um, seeing our women's basketball win by, what, 20 points here. They score over 100 points. Yeah. Seeing Coach Nagel, who I was part of that interview team, win Coach of the Week in all of Division Three across the country. And these are great. Those are great moments. I get, and folks, that's in four, what, three months. That's one semester. So if you think about all the things I say, we're on the move. In, in athletics, Bison are on the move. And hashtag on the move is something that's real and alive here at Nichols. That basketball against Bryant, Pete, I think there's no question that I took a picture, 12-8. Mm -hmm. I still have that. We were ahead 12-8. Yep, we I were. took a picture, and I have that, and I think I tweeted it that night. I won't, uh, that, that's all I'll remember that night. And turn around, seeing everybody uh, chanting, we stole Glenn, was probably a pretty good <laughs> moment, too, uh, to the Bryant family. So it was pretty funny. It's very fun. Um, you've been here long enough, I'm sure, to have heard the whispers about hockey rings oh, and yeah. facilities. No whispers, and We talked about you know, the golf course. We talked about townhomes on campus, um, you know, hockey rinks, baseball fields, turf fields. Um, where are we kind of with facilities and, and Nichols Athletics? Not to put you on the spot. No, don't put me on. It's important to talk about. I'm, I'm a big supporter of the hockey rink. And I'll tell you, I think it's important to have one. I think it'll help us. It'll help me. I want the kids on campus. I don't want them living off campus. I want the coaches to push our students to be on here so our campus stays alive. I don't want 
downtown Webster being the fun spot to be. I wanted it right here at Dudley in my backyard. I'm living with these guys. I need a place to go on a Saturday night, Pete. <laughs> so, so they... Uh, well, there's that bar at the golf course. That's I right. Mean. Well, Marla's running that right now. Right? Um, I think what we want to um, uh, do is very much... I'm very supportive of the hockey rink. We are looking to identify spaces that cost a lot of money. So I'll be as transparent as I can be. I need big donations. Big. Big to get this going. And... and you know, a hockey ring costs folks about $15 million. So uh, we've got to keep that in mind. We need to have a substantial uh, support. And there's there's movement in that direction. So we'll keep it. And we are identifying spaces for it. And it's not the golf course. Right. Adamantly. Just as I've told every person, Pete and Dudley, every time I talk to them, say, Glenn, we hear you're getting rid of the, the golf course. You get, you know, making a hockey rink on the golf course. That's not true. I love the golf course. I want a golf course. I think it's important for our students to have that experience. Our golfers right. and our uh, uh, folks in sports management as well as in hospitality management get to, get to run classes and run the restaurant slash bar. So uh, the bison den is back. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, so I think the baseball field is very, very important to me. I met with the baseball players, Pete, uh, some of them, and uh, nothing hurt me more is to hear them say they were embarrassed of their field. And so we're moving out on that. I just met with Bob an hour ago. And so we're moving out on that. And it wouldn't be a baseball field. It'll be an all-purpose field. Because I want our field hockey. Women have a spot. I want soccer. I want lacrosse. Women's lacrosse. We have to have all of our sports represented and, and taken care of. So Bob is very, very much in support of that. He and I are trying to find ways to at least initially what we have identified both the townhomes and that all-purpose field uh, down in that area. Um, so I, I really, I mean, it's, it's uh, you talk about great moments and wonderful, one of the worst moments was having the baseball team tell me that they had friends come and they were embarrassed to show them the field. Well, that, that basketball team that we played on Monday night came to our field a couple years ago and they got on the bus and left. No, so they, I mean, they refused to play us. So. I mean, that's the kind of thing, I mean, it's, and it's dangerous. And, you know, so I, and we have great coach in Coach Mayo. We have a great group of young men. Um, in, on the baseball team, and I want to make sure they're taken care of. Just like I want the softball women taken care of, and our great softball coach, we got to have. All, we have to take care. If we're going to say athletics is important to me, I got to make sure they can at least play. Let sure. them on. Be to be embarrassed, that kills me. If you want to say what's so great about being a president, or what's the exciting part, the downside. There's nothing worse than someone still looking at you. One of your students, one of your athletes who came here, right? Great athlete comes here because it was proud to be a Nichols. Bison family and says, I'm embarrassed to show somebody in my field or a recruit in my high school my field. I will not, I am, I gave them my word. I will do whatever I can to fix that so they do not have that feeling. Sure. And athletics, you know, over the last couple of years has made up between 50 and 60% of the student body 53 here. 53 right now. Mm -hmm. and, and the female side has been a little bit lower, somewhere in the, you know, low to mid 30s at different times. Um, it's coming back up. It is, and, and that's what we'll talk about now with the, the female student-athletes, with yep. softball, with lacrosse, with things like that, just the role that they have on campus. And, and sometimes it's, you know, we're business school, we're criminal justice, we don't have nursing, we don't have education, but um, at the same time, the female student-athletes, how important are they to us as a campus, Incre as student-athletes, and where are we going with them? Incredibly important. One of the things I want us to be known as the business school for women as well, and I think it's a niche that we can hit. We have an incredible women's tennis team. One of the items I didn't say... When you talk about one item, and I think you might have heard that I say "Go books, go bison" from time to time, there's Once nothing in, in the champion in, in this conference playoffs. I guess against uh, Roger Williams, we beat, we crushed them a couple like a week before. I'd watch them on a Saturday and crushed them. And uh, one of the young ladies who's on the team, I won't say her name. Uh, when I went to watch that tennis match, she showed me on her on her back. She had tattooed on her back, "Go books, go bison." So, wow! <laughs> it was, it was uh, it, that makes you pretty happy to say that's only in a few months that someone's it's not literally tattooed. I think it was written or something. Okay, but but it was enough for me to say that that was pretty cool to have that. Uh, you know, before I think she was the number one. Uh, uh, so it was uh, that that was great. Um, you know, there's no doubt something like that moves you. Sure. And I think uh, the women. Uh, uh, one of the items that's very, very important to me is to move that needle big time. Not just a little bit, big time. Right or wrong, women are do better in college. They are better leaders. They are more leaders of more clubs and sports uh, on a college campus. They have a higher GPA, higher rate of graduation, higher, G, uh, higher starting salary once they graduate. 
So as a matter of running it like a business school, I'd be an idiot not to want more women athletes because they are special. They are great leaders as well as academically very, very strong and stronger than men. It's just reality, fact. So it's very, very important for me to do that. And also out of, you know, from an ethical perspective, I, I want our camp, if I want our campus to be alive, we need to have 40 to 50% women. And you know, the rest of the, the trend at other uh, institutions is that more women are going to college than men. And we have this other side. A lot of business schools are struggling with this now. Business schools have sort of become like the engineering school. Like you said, they don't want to have it. Well, we introduced things like criminal psychology. We've introduced, we are introducing um, uh, um, healthcare management and healthcare analytics. So those are both being introduced, which are huge job opportunities. It checks all the boxes. Mm -hmm. A lot of job opportunity, high starting salary, as well as very appealing uh, from an uh, all gender perspective. So I, I'm uh, very, very uh, supportive of that. And, I hope we continue to do it. I think one, one item, we don't have women's golf. I've mentioned it to Eric uh, a little bit. I think we should do that. Um, if we don't, we I know Marla's going to start an initiative for women on campus to, to just take golf lessons um, and make sure that they have that option at, at, at our Nichols Golf Course. We're breaking news left and right here on Have You Heard, everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Go Books, Go Bison. Uh, where did that come from exactly? the background it, it's it's a lot one, one the bigger overarching theme for that is that we are a place that is 52 percent athletes and that's important and i value it but at the end of the day we're here to get an education that's why we're people are going to nichols college to become something else and so i want to emphasize academics the great two competing entities at any college right college athletics and, and academics so i always want to say not just go Roll tide, right. but roll books go roll tide. So the whole thrust is, is to send the signal to the faculty and to our students that academics matters to me too. As much as you all know that I love sports and I, I uh, uh, love attending the games, I love talking to the students, I talk to them about the games, they're probably like, who is this guy? Is that At the end of the day, every parent wants their child to have that academic grounding and academic background. That's what college is about, academics. Student it's getting athlete. a degree. And it's the student athlete, so that's really the thrust. Is a celebration of the student scholar or scholar athlete. I noticed the students have embraced it. Something else that they're starting to embrace now is the fight song. So, <laughs> where did the idea for the fight song come from, and, and when did you think you know you'd be the one that penned the lyrics for it? I, I one of the items that was upsetting me was there's no pep bands. So we're starting that now. I've got a pep band. So, have you heard? You can know a pep band, a theater, and uh, and, and uh, we're, we're getting those started now. And and the bison, bison singers are coming back for the second semester. Yeah. But I, the uh, the fight song was something I'm most proud of. Again, you laugh, and, and you've been terrific, Pete, with helping me with this, is putting it out there at the games and putting the word, lyrics down, is the idea we didn't have one. And I was at the game saying, there's no pep song, fight song. So literally, you're, uh, uh, as Marla will ask you and ask me, Pete, you when did you have the time to do this? Right. To say, you're supposed to be so busy. And uh, sitting at the desk, I just sat and started penning out what would be a fight song. Well, we have to have something in there. And all the bison sitting here, the green and black, you know, and the, and I was thinking, what do bison do? They stampede, and that's the whole stampede. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I'm sure we'll start just playing the end, the last two lines, to get people sometimes, like at a point at a uh, women's basketball, a chemo game, just to play that, and they'll start getting it. But I'm watching people, they, they tease, but... They're embarrassed to be proud of it yet. So we'll get it going and we'll keep pushing that. And I think it's an important part of athletics is to have that fight song. And, and we have such a great history here. So many great athletes and great uh, folks that are on the podcast now listening that are big supporters of athletics, even if they didn't play. And we need to have that sort of pride. Uh, and again, this is part of us busting out. Everything I'm doing now, the vision consistently is to be regionally prominent and then nationally prominent. So every thrust and having a fight song is part of what a big time school does. And guess what? We're going big time, folks. We yep. just got to we got to saddle up. And I said, we I ask you all to think about sending me emails or thoughts on Division two, Division one. I. I see it as thinking big. I see it as you know embracing greatness. And, uh, you know, part of that, we need a fight song. So that's where I literally sat and I penned it here in this office <laughs> and sent it, uh, sent it around a little bit and floated it to the cabinet and sang it to the cabinet the first time and they they all liked it 
so I thought uh, the other VPs were, were going to reject it and say, no, but they're like, this is cool. And, and uh, then we went and PJ went and got it music put to it over at the local Shepherd Hill High School and others put a, put a, a band, put music to it, and now we got it. So, you know, go fight, win, stampede, baby. It is an important thing for a college to have, and, and you having been a Division One institution, I've worked at a number of different schools, and, and the Jets it have is, one. The, the Jets have one. I, <laughs> I do some work from some other Division One schools, and whether it's after a hockey game or after right. a basketball game, they play that song. So I think here, I was explaining to someone this morning, it might take four years to cycle in a group of students who know the fight song because you have upperclassmen who they're not used to hearing this. The freshmen, oh, this is what we play at games now. So that it. tradition will build over a couple of years. It wasn't, I say, it wasn't built in the day. wasn't built in the day with this one either at this no, point. No, no question. But with the pep band, it'll help. For sure. A pep band in the stands. But just picture our, our wonderful basketball arena with a pep band in the corner. I think the place is going to go crazy. It's going to rock more than we even can, can imagine. Right now, we have a tough time keeping kids off the court. I've never seen them like well. it. They go up <laughs> to the court. I've walked over there a couple of times and push yeah. people back. But uh, yeah. hopefully they they uh, just stay in the stands and sing the fight song. We have some passionate fans, that's for sure. No too. doubt. No doubt. Um, good transition here. So you're a father of seven. I'm sure you're a fan of them in many different ways. Um, are they athletes at all? Have you coached yes. at all? Yep. Um, and yep. what's it like being on that side of the fence? Yep, it's fun. It's fun for me. Um, the uh, I've, co- I've coached at the Coast Guard Academy as well. So I coached, uh, I was the running backs coach the year uh, that we were 0-9. Mm. <laughs> Not your fault, though. So the, <laughs> we didn't run very well, I guess. So it was fun. Uh, and I coached Teddy uh, and, um, and Callum, I coach now. But Teddy is the one who's a sophomore at LaSalle Academy um, now. And Sam is the oldest one who's a sophomore baseball player. Okay. He was at Bryant. And I didn't coach him because I wasn't a baseball player. I don't that, this whole baseball thing threw me off. I thought it was all only lacro- lacrosse only. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, Callum is a football and basketball player. And I, yes, he's eight now. He was seven. Um, coaching him is kind of fun. And it is fun. I mean, most people, if you, and I don't mean to put this out there because I'll probably regret saying this, most people see, uh, when they see me, if I have a jacket on or a sweatshirt, think I have a similarity to a certain coach. <laughs> and it's not Robert Redford or it's not, you know, it happens to be Belichick. So You're people, a little more outgoing in public at oh, least no, than no, he is. No question. But, uh, you know, when they see me on the sidelines with a headset on and stuff. So <laughs> Uh, a lot of people tease me about that. That was the one thing that I get a lot. If hope. you start to come to work with cutoffs on your jackets, exactly. I'll pull you aside. And we'll I, have a discussion I hate about that he it. does that. I love the Patriots and I love Bill Belichick, but I, I hate. I wish he would wear a suit. I like the Tom Landry days, where you know he, he would uh, uh, dress in a suit, a jacket on the sidelines. I love that. I love that our coaches dress so well here. Um, you know, Tom Landry's the kind of guy when he's playing it at the Superdome. Why he always had his hat off because he was on gentlemanly. Like, why would he? Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> it's like, it's those days, I want to bring those yeah. back. And I love seeing Brock and his guys, a new basketball coach, in suits. They all look good. Uh, it's just a great feeling for me to watch our guys dressed appropriately. Yeah, I mean, it's something and actually... Ladies. I've had this discussion with, with a lot of people recently. Just I've done a lot of basketball game statistics over the years. And the pandemic kind of put coaches in a sense of we're going to windbreakers and, you know, workout pants and sneakers and not dress up. And, and I found out the other night, unfortunately, that Jay Wright, who I feel is the best dressed coach in college basketball next to Brock, is falling right in line with it. Um, and I really, I'm with you. I wish Brock, don't do, don't, don't do it. back. No. Coach Erickson, everybody, Coach Nagel, stay as you are, guys. I guess yeah, Brock's, uh, I will tell you, after that, the game, um, uh, his first win uh, back, back uh, I guess that was against uh, – Maybe it was P.P. Hamilton. What was the first? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Who was the home opener? It was a Friday night Castleton, I think. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, It was the first home win. Gosh, it wasn't Tufts. It was a Friday night. Yeah. Um, So we go back. Plymouth State, maybe. It was Plymouth State. Plymouth State. There you go. So Plymouth State, so we win in his first one. He's got, uh, so the guys tell us what they're going to do to him. So we ask Marlon and I. So I'm sure most of the guys aren't used to having a woman in the locker room. Marlon and I are in the locker room to see Brock and Marla's talking to him, saying, this is a beautiful suit, knowing what's coming. <laughs> so he's like, yes, I just got it. I'm so excited. Boom, they dumped water on his <laughs> brand new suit. So it was, uh, that was fun to see poor Brock have that happen to him. He's doing a heck of a job, and all, all of the coaches have been and are. I'm, I'm so fortunate to know all of them. Uh, I love their support. Sure. Um, one thing I did learn about you, a little bit off topic of sports, but while I was doing research for this podcast, Uh-oh. was yeah, no, you're, worried here, you're a little bit of a, you're a penned author. 
Um, yeah. Your uh, book is sitting yep. above my shoulder here, the National Security Court System. Yep. Um, talk a little bit about your, uh, I guess, your time as an author. Yep. No, I, I uh, have that in an uh, edited volume on Homeland Security International Law Challenges and then uh, Junior Ethics uh, uh, ethics for the Junior Officer, three books that I've been in, you know, a few chapters here and there, too, and uh, about uh, 100 articles written uh, in law review articles and op-eds. So I used to write a lot of op-eds, and uh, this is this national security court system was um, grew out of my work with national security law, which is what I did, and was uh, a lot of, some of it, the opposite of what normally happens, you usually write a book and you do op-eds off of that. This is sure. taking my thoughts that I had done in op-eds and in law review articles and incorporated it into a book. It's published by Oxford Uni University Press, which is flattering when I was a young fellow to be offered a, a book contract from Oxford University Press. Uh, but it was finding a way, which you'll get to know me at all, is finding a way to yes. Uh, I always believe in that. I've, and obviously, as you probably get it, you know, eternal optimist, always seeing the right side and the bright side of everything and saying, we're going to do it. And this was offering President Bush and then President Obama a way out of Guantanamo. Not that it was right, wrong, or otherwise, but finding a way to do it in a way that it maintain the dignity of the U.S. Armed Forces, adherence to the law, and, and also uh, providing justice, uh, severe justice, to those who tried to attack us and, and destroy our way of life. Um, so it was uh, entertained by both administrations briefly and the idea of creating national security courts in the United States as opposed to having it done at Guantanamo Bay by the military. Um, but uh, it was a great uh, great run, a lot of fun. That was, uh, you know, a, a, a being interviewed on C-SPAN is always fun on your book and sure. spoken about for an hour and you realize how, uh, how uh, inarticulate you are and, and often how uh, I have a very, very good face for radio and you realize that pretty quickly. I understand that's why we're doing a podcast. You start seeing, <laughs> thank you, Pete. Thank you for recognizing that. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, more for me. No, I think for me too. I You start to realize, oh my goodness gracious. But it was, uh, the whole thing was a great experience and, and anytime you, Want to get a copy of the book? I have a few extras you can imagine. You're always welcome to take one, or I'll give you one. Anyone wants one can email me, and I'll mail it to you for Christmas. I wish I could say I'm qualified to have a further conversation about that, but I can't say that I am at this point. It was, it was fun. It's been great chatting with you, Glenn, as we you. kind of wind things down here. I kind of want to just give you the floor here to just discuss any closing thoughts on Nichols, messages to alumni and supporters, and yeah. just um, where we're at right now. Well, I want to say thanks. Pete, thanks to you for what you're doing. You're a one-man show, one-person show out there, doing a lot of great things for this place. So thank you. Thanks, and man. I thank all of the uh, the coaches and Eric and all the supporters and donors and the folks doing the Bison Blitz, giving your money. is It's working. I can tell you as a new guy in town, it is working. You're helping us move the needle forward, and we're going to move it further. Um, I do want you to all join me in this quest. One of the things that's great about a place like Nichols, Pete, is that we're all in this together. When you're an all in together, yeah, it's true to agree, but we're on a mission. It's greater than self, like I said before. This is the idea of national, regional and national prominence. This is from the folks that are cutting the grass, to the coaches, to the staff, to the cabinet, to the faculty, to me. We're all in this sort of co shared collective vision of moving Nichols to the next level and breaking out of the bubble. We are better than that. You are better than that. This is an incredible institution. Wear your Nichols gear with pride. Tell five kids, everyone listening, tell five kids to apply. Five kids, everybody. If you pledge to give five kids, get five kids just to apply. I guarantee if we get them on campus, they're coming here. We're going to have an ability to grow this place and, and explode. And even if you don't, if they don't apply, they're still going to know that you're that proud that you're speaking to five kids about this, your alma mater or a place that you're a booster of. Because this is an extraordinary institution that's busting at the seams. And I do tell you, please call me anytime if you need anything. Check in with me. See me at the games. Pull me aside. Give me ideas you have. We're moving out on sports big time. As you said, I am literally saying to you, what do you hear? I'm saying I want us to move up into Division Two or Division One. That's my thought at this point, and I want your feedback and thoughts as we explode onto the scene. So go books, go Bison. Glenn, thanks so much for doing this. Your, your passion is evident with everything you're, you've told us today, and, and I really enjoyed having you on the podcast. Thanks so much for doing it. My and honor. for your support of athletics, honestly. It's, it's great to see you down there. The fight song is going over. <laughs> um, it, it's, just, it's a joy having you down there. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Pete. Okay. Thanks again for everyone for listening to Have You Heard.